Today I'm going to show you how to make a pumpkin using two pinch pots. So the first thing I want to do is make two even balls of clay and I'm going to create pinch pots with those. So as you can see I'm pinching and turning making sure to keep them pretty round. Um, don't make the edges too thin because if you do it's going to be difficult to put them together. See they're about the same thickness as my pinky for the walls. So there's one. Kind of tap the edge to flatten out the rim a little bit. And now I'm going to create a second pinch pot. And it's crucial that your walls are even thickness all the way throughout because if they aren't, you could end up with a thick spot that causes an explosion in the kiln if it's not completely dry or you know if it's too thin. You may have a weak spot or the unevenness can um, cause uneven drying and cracking. So pinky thickness roughly. Now my pieces are scored and slipped together so I've got to blend that seam. Um, I'm going to use a wooden tool just to drag across the seam there and make sure it's really blended together well. You can actually go back and forth in both directions. You can use your fingers as well but sometimes I feel like uh, the wooden tool works a little bit better just to drag back and forth and seal that seam up because when we're done we don't want to see any evidence of a seam left behind. It's important that your clay is plastic when you do this or otherwise it will not go together as well and you may have a big uh, divot where the seam was. All right so just finishing that up. Looks pretty good. Next thing I'm going to do is take a smooth rib and scrape over the um, sphere that I've made now because I want to clean it up, make it look nice and neat and smooth. Again, um, blend that seam together well so that um, there's no remains of it and it just looks like a hollow sphere. Make sure that as you're ribbing over the sphere that you are removing any clay that gets on your rib because otherwise you're just going to put it right back onto your sphere and it's going to look kind of crusty. And obviously that doesn't look good. So as you rib, clean off the rib as necessary. But this really makes a difference.
All right, pumpkin ridges are drawn in and then pressed in. And now I'm going to clean those up a little bit with that smooth silicone rib and just try to make them look a little more rounded on the edges so they look more natural. Um, we don't want them to look, you know, like we did it with clay tools. We want it to look like an actual pumpkin. Now I'm gonna roll out a little clay and make a stem. So just like when you're a kid, you make the little Play-Doh snakes, kind of the same deal, but I'm doing it with the clay. And then I'm going to wet my fingertips and shape it a little bit. I'm just flattening out the bottom where I'm going to attach it to that divot on the top. And then I'm using my wet fingertips to pull that stem some and shape it. And I'm actually using the grooves created by my fingers to create texture because pumpkin stems are textured. And just twisting it into the shape I want. All right, looking pretty good. I'm going to score and slip it to the top of the pumpkin. So there we go, right in that little divot. Score the bottom of the stem. Remember, you want to score both surfaces before you attach them. Put the slip in place and push it down, gently twist and push down. And then I'm going to put my stem into the shape I want it. Now it's starting to look like a real pumpkin. All right, now I'm just using the wooden tool to blend down in a few places um, the stem to the pumpkin. And again, make it look a little more natural because I don't want it to look like I made it out of clay. I want to go for kind of the real thing here. Now I'm going to add some warts. And I'm just using the chunkier pieces of slip. I'm really not even scoring these um, because the clay is still really plastic. And I'm just kind of forming that slip in little spots to make it look like warts on a pumpkin. Scatter a few of those around. And yours doesn't have to have warts, but if you want to include them, you can. This is just an option. So I'm going for kind of a realistic look here. So that's what I'm doing to mine. Then I'm going to use the wooden tool and shape those a little bit. All right, looking pretty good. I'm gonna put a couple more on here. All right, now I'm gonna make a little curly cue coming off the top because as you know, pumpkins grow on vines and often there will be little remnants of vine um, attached to the pumpkin still. And they usually form these little curly cue pieces. So I'm making one of those, again, just rolling off the clay into a snake or coil, if you will. And the first one didn't turn out so good. So I'm making one a little bit thicker. Your clay really needs to be plastic for this part or you're not going to be able to shape it good. All right, now I'm going to wrap that around. And the end that I attach to the pumpkin is actually gonna be a little bit um, thicker than the end that is not attached. So keep that in mind. So a um, little out of the picture here, but I'm scoring and slipping that in place. And there we go. Now it's got a stem and a little curly cue. Another little wart in there. I think it's looking good. And now I'm using a pencil that I had at my disposal to create a little bit more texture on that stem. All right, at this point, my pumpkin has set up overnight and is now leather hard. So I'm going back over those ridges with a damp paintbrush just to clean them up a little bit, smooth them out some, um, make them more rounded and naturalistic looking. Um, at this point, oh, also repoke the hole just to make sure it didn't get sealed back up while the clay was still leather hard. At this point, if you're going to do any carving, if you want to make a jack-o'-lantern or if you want to do any other kind of carving on it, this is the best time to do that while the clay is still leather hard. Um, if you wait till it's too dry, then it's prone to break. But if you do it while it's leather hard, that's the perfect um, time. I'm using my uh, damp fingertips to also kind of work over those ridges and soften them up a little bit. I just want them to look more rounded. And now I'm penciling in where I'm going to cut out a door because I'm going to make my pumpkin look like a tiny little house. So I'm just drawing in that. I'm drawing in where I'm going to make a window. I'm going to cut it out with an X-Acto knife, but 
You know, first I think I'm gonna go over it a few more times to make the line a little deeper. And that way when I go to cut it, it's easier. And my X-Acto knife doesn't go astray and cut where I don't want it to. So I'm removing the piece that I cut out and I'm just smoothing the edges, cleaning it up, making sure it's nice and round. I don't have any debris on the inside of the hole. <clears throat> A little more cleanup. So this is going to be a little window in this house. Now I'm going to take that piece I cut out and flatten it some and I'm going to smooth it out a little bit and I'm going to make some shutters for the window. And these are going to look like they're thrown open. I was gonna give them a wood texture, but then I thought, well, if they're carved out of a pumpkin, they wouldn't have a wooden texture. So I'm just gonna leave them smooth like the pumpkin. All right, so I'm gonna score and slip those to the edges of my little window there. All right, there we go. There's one, and since that's a really small little um, seam, I'm just using the paintbrush with a little bit of slip, or you can even use just a damp paintbrush um, to sort of go over that seam. I'm adding a little bit of clay there just to strengthen it because I don't want it to dry and break off. Now I'm going to put the other one on there too. Cleaning it up just a little bit securing it with a little extra clay and the window's looking pretty good. You really want to pay attention to detail when you're doing this. Um, take your time, make it look nice. Speed is not important, but detail and craftsmanship are. So take your time and do a really good job. And once I get done with this, I'm going to go back over the little door that I penciled in before. Um, I don't think I'm going to make the door open since the window is open too. But I will kind of carve it out more and make it look a little more three-dimensional instead of just drawn on. Yep, there's the finished window. And here's the piece with the door and I even added a little curly Q doorknob on it. Pretty much done. So there you go. Now you just gotta let it dry out and wait for it to be bisque fired and then you can paint or glaze. Hope you enjoyed this video and I can't wait to see your pumpkins and how they turn out.